One important sort of uh, thing that we are sort of quantity that we can um, we compute for a language model. Um, and it's one of the most um, important, perhaps the most single important quantity to sort of understand what a random variable is doing uh, is entropy. So entropy was a sort of in um, sort of a quantification of how random or how uncertain the value of a, a random variable is. Um, so it was famously invented by um, famously invented by Claude Shaman in, in 1948 in his master's thesis, which is uh, quite intimidating, all things considered. I think it was his master's thesis. Um, but uh, the question, I mean, it has many, many applications, um, but the question that we really care about that entropy answers is that how do we place, how do we map distributions to some scale where one of the scale, we sort of say we're low entropy, where we say we have a distribution that places maybe all its probability mass on one item. And on the other, we say we can, we have no idea. It's completely uniform. Um, so for instance, this distribution on the left here, um, this has one bit of entropy. Um, and because there are only two possible outcomes that you can have with positive probability, this first and the second uh, dot. Um, this distribution also has one bit of entropy, but it's spread out a bit more. So these are roughly going to be the same. However, if I if I put probability mass equally on all four, it would have much higher entropy. And of course, if I placed it all in one item, then it would have zero entropy. So the reason... Um, the reason we like uh, entropy when discussing language model generation tasks uh, is it often gives us some proxy for how interesting or how um, varied the text that comes back um, is likely to be. Um, and in some a concrete example where the entropy is likely to be different um, between different generation tasks is going to be, say, if you take a language model and you model it on web text, um, you're likely to have a lot of really good sentences that you'd like to see pop out of that language model. Now, if you think about this, this is a very open-ended setup where I'm just going to train a language model on a lot of documents, and I'm going to generate text and, and ask what's good and what's bad. Um, and I expect a lot of good sentences on a wide variety of topics. On the other hand, if I considered something like machine translation, I would want this to be a low entropy task. That is, I'd expect there to be very few sentences where uh, I'd like to have high probability. Like if I translate this uh, French sentence, j'aime vim, from uh, which vim is not a French word, it's, I guess it is in a sense, but it's uh, the text editor. You would really want this to come back and say, I like vim. That is, there'd be few good generations. So in a sense here, entropy is also sort of a fundamental property of the different tasks that we discuss. So when we have some tasks, some generation tasks have higher and lower entropy.